Okay, so here's the deal. I wasn't going to make this video, and I wasn't planning on it at all, but so many of you guys have been asking me to, so I guess I'm going to do it. Okay, first off, I just want to thank you guys so, so much for all of your love of that first video that I made. I've gotten so many DMs and so many comments about questions, and I've been told that so many of you guys found that so helpful, and that just really warms my heart because... It just makes me feel really, really happy that I was able to help at least someone. Okay, so today I want to be talking more about the Culinary Institute of America. So from all your DMs and comments and everything, I decided that I'm just going to put a bunch of those questions and more into a list. So I just have a list on my phone and I am ready to answer all your questions. So right now, let me just say I'm in my second semester because of being in quarantine and everything, everything's just kind of been on pause for me. So I'm still in my second semester. I haven't done anything for a while, which has been really nice. Let me just say that. Okay, so one of the most requested questions were, how is the workload? How is it like, like being a student and going to classes at the CIA? I already said in the previous video, but classes are long. So just expect that. It's not like a traditional college where you're like going from one class to the other and basically you kind of have those like five to ten minutes to walk to class and kind of just clear your mind. You don't really have that because you just have one class really throughout the day, one or two, and just know that classes feel like a long time and it's just part of the experience. So along with that there were a lot of questions about academic classes. So at the CIA the academic classes are like nothing close to if you took like AP or even honors or IB classes in high school, I know I did and I was really used to really hard and like just tough academic classes. It's not like that here. All of the academic classes are kind of, well most of them are culinary based. I, almost all of them. I don't even know what I'm saying most of them. The classes I took my first semester were food safety, professionalism, hospitality, in college writing I think and also your first semester you usually have to take um, a math class but there was a test that you could take it to like opt out of it if you passed and I passed that so I didn't have to take math so that was really nice so just keep that in mind so CIA has this thing I'm pretty sure it's kind of new but it's called green and gold weekend where the summer before you attend school they have this weekend where you can stay and like I guess take tours get to know the campus a little bit and during that you can sign up to take the test it's optional but if you pass you don't have to take the class which is awesome so I did it it was um, not too hard it was mainly just simple algebra and a bunch of like culinary based math questions so like if you had a pound of turkey and your yield was this much like how much do you need to serve this many people like stuff like that so just keep in mind that's the type of thing they do have like study questions so you can study for that but then my second semester for class I had different academics I had nutrition gastronomy I didn't have to take micro and macro yet I had very specific questions about micro and macro I have yet to take those so just keep in mind all the stuff that I've been telling you guys I'm an associate student so the stuff that I take might be different for you if you're a bachelor student so with that said just remember that when you're an associate student at the CIA, everything is more kitchen class focused instead of academic focused because you're not really getting more most of the academics here. You're just going there to basically cook. But some of the classes that you guys might ask about, I might never take them or I will, but it might just be later on. I'm still not too sure yet. A lot of the information I'm telling you is just what I know. So I am trying my best to find information for you guys if I can. So along with the academic classes, it's not like a state school where you have like lecture halls filled with like 200 people it's about like 20 people so it's like a high school class almost so you're sitting there some classes are more lecture based some classes you actually have to do stuff it really depends on your professors so with that said academic classes are only about two hours long and it's usually either before or after kitchen classes depending on what time you decide to take them and academic classes are the classes where you're probably going to have your homework. Kitchen classes, you're going to have less homework, but it really does, like I say, depend on your chef. Because my roommate gets the most homework I've ever seen from a kitchen class, and I'm sitting over here with nothing. So again, it really just depends who you have as a chef or professor. It all goes. It's the same in any school, any college, but just keep that in mind. So another question I always get is, what are the hours slash times you can go to class so for kitchen classes you have either obviously the morning or the afternoon shift class time i don't know i'm not my brain's not functioning today so just i'm gonna try to talk correct now 
morning classes start at 7 o'clock and end at 1.30. And then PM classes start at 2.30 and end at, no, start at 2 and end at 8.30. Shoot, I might be messing this up. My first semester I took PM kitchen classes and now second semester I took AM. So I really should know the exact time, but I'm being really dumb right now. They're six hours. And you get a lunch or a dinner break in between depending on AM or PM. And they're usually an hour long, the lunch or dinner break. But just remember, even if it starts at seven, you're expected to be there by like 6.30. Like you always wanna be early. So like, just remember, you're gonna have to wake up a little earlier and just time everything correctly. You don't wanna be late. If you're late too many times, I think it's like three times that counts as like an absent. And then if you're like absent, then you like get like certain amount of demerits, then you have to take the class over again, and then you fail or whatever. It's really strict. The thing is that like no one's ever not there unless you like want to fail. I remember there's like not to call him out, but there's this one kid in my fundamentals class. He just like didn't ever show up, and he thought it was like fine. He showed up late every day, and we saw him. He was just like outside doing whatever he was doing, so he just didn't come. He ended up dropping out, which makes sense. So if you want to waste your money, then don't come to class. <laughs> if you realize that college is expensive, especially this one, then you'll come to class on time, on time. Unless you want to be known as that kid and you're just going to be hated. You don't want to be hated, so just go to class. Thank you. Okay, bye. I said bye, but I'm still here. Oh, another question I got a lot was, what is fundies? Everyone's like, what is fundamentals? So fundamentals is like everyone takes this associates bachelors whatever and everyone always takes it their first semester because it's the fundamentals of your life in school and just in life so oops i almost knocked over my sparkling water uh spindrift is the best sparkling water ever if you want to sponsor me half tea half lemon flavor it's great five calories guys no sugars tastes delicious don't buy other sparkling waters buy spindrift Back to what I was saying. That is the class that is different from the rest of the classes you will ever take. Because how it works is, okay, so this might be kind of confusing. It really confused me, so we're just going to focus and pay attention. So, fundamentals is an eight-hour long class. Is that right? Okay, you know what? Let's just break this down. Let's just break this down a little more. Oh, that's really close to my face. We're going to back that up a little bit. Okay, so to simplify this, I'm just gonna show you guys my keynote because I don't know where else to do this because I'm just not like very techy or whatever. And I'm gonna show you guys my somewhat organized layout of how I think my schedules work. So enjoy this. Let's move it to the laptop. Okay, so when you're in your first semester for kitchen classes, let's start to talk about that. You have fundies. Guys, stop getting so close to me. Let's not do that. Okay. And that obviously is the same for baking pastry or uh, culinaries. Okay, so then you have your academics. So for your academic classes, those are usually... Now, some people I know take different ones because it's how their counselor does it. So I had a friend that took a bunch their first semester and their second semester. They had it really easy. I honestly don't suggest doing that because it's just like, that's too much. But... Normal people, not normal people, but usually how it works is, let's leave that. Usually you have food safety. Food safety is the most annoying class you will ever take. Um, food safety teaches you all about serve safe. So ooh, let's do that. So serve food safety, you also take serve safe. Now, for those of you who went to uh, vocational schools, specialty culinary schools or whatever, you probably took a serve safe test. So serve safe teaches you all about correct temperatures, anything you could possibly know to like, I guess, be safe and to not kill consumers or yourself in the kitchen. So it is very necessary class. So let's talk about food safety first. Thing. In food safety, you learn all about different like germs and like whatever. So they are together. So the serve safe is just the test. And, ooh, I have the book. Okay, so I just ran to get my book. I don't know why I brought it. I was just showing you guys, which we're just going to chuck it now. Oh, no, I almost broke it. That was bad. Everything you learn in food safety helps you take the serve safe test. The test or the book, if you buy the book, it comes with a test on the inside. As you guys can see, mine is uh, ripped off. It's almost like a Scantron. It's their own thing, though. This test is vital to your life. 
If you don't pass the test, you have to take the test over and over and over until you pass. It sucks. Now, embarrassingly enough, I failed the first time. And you know, like, you know when you say to yourself, like, I think I'm gonna yeah. fail, and then, like, everyone else, you, you just say to them, it's, a, it's just like what you say, you're like, oh my like, god, I definitely failed. Like, like, everyone's finding out their scores, it's like, I failed, I'm too scared to look, I failed, you know? And then you look, and you actually failed, and then everyone's like, Jen, did you Jen, fail? You did you like, you like, and then they're expecting me to be like, oh yeah, I failed, and they're like, hey, you're so funny. And then, like, like, you were kidding, but like, I wasn't kidding, I failed. By one point. I'm pretty sure you need... I don't even know the facts anymore because I tried to wipe that part out of my mind, but I think it was like a 75 and I got like a 74. Oh, and when you fail, you have to take five hours or, or more of tutoring and it has to be like signed. Like you actually have to go to the place, get tutoring. It was actually really, really fun. Tutoring was actually more fun than I thought. I actually liked it. And now I know a good amount of stuff, a good amount to get an 85. That I thought was pretty good. Come on guys, 85 on a serve save. We're getting off track. Let's go back to the, let's go back to the keynote. So, food safety, surf safe, test, important. Number two, we have um, intro to hospitality. This is the most fun class I've ever taken in my life. Oh, you guys don't have him. Oh, okay, well the professor that taught it, his name was Mr. Fischetti, the nicest dude in the world. I'm not even kidding. Oh, I think there are other people, but he's the nicest guy I've ever met in my life. You're gonna have 100 in that class. But well, you guys aren't gonna have him because he he's retiring. He's like moving to like Peru or something, like living his life. Basically, this entire class is revolved around one book. So you read this one book and you talk about this one book. I could be wrong. Maybe other professors do it different. This is how he does it, and he's so chill about it. You can literally like cheat your way through the class. Don't. Hopefully, like CIA people, they don't see this. But whatever. We're gonna move on. Nice class. You talk about being hospitable and just how to be friendly. Next class you take as a first semester person is professionalism. So professionalism. This is a class where you learn to be professional. Nothing else to it. If you get Professor Maisie, nicest person in the world. Moving on. Um, the next academic class you take is math and we already talked about that so that's optional. Depending on if you pass the test. You have to pass the test. Next class is college writing. This is basically your English class. You just type a bunch of essays. I spelled that wrong. Mine, this, guys, I can't spell. It's okay. N not everyone can spell, guys. It's it's, n it's not like school teaches you this stuff anymore. Can't even write, guys. Clearly, I failed this class. Just kidding. I actually got a pretty high score in the class. Is that wrong? No, that has to be right. Okay, we're going to move on. So, in your first semester... Every Monday equals no classes. So in your first semester, you only have classes four days a week. It's really, really nice. It's so nice. You lose that second semester. So Monday, there are no classes. And also how it works is um, every Tuesday and Thursday. Oh, and this may be switched for some people. So just keep that in mind. Maybe switch Tuesday and Thursday equals kitchen classes and then Wednesday and Friday is academics first semester people this is what it will look like it's so great so for your second semester everything changes even for culinary people remember I'm baking pictures soon but I I know things so for kitchen this changes you have I think five different classes. So now that you know all the basics, we're diving into every subject. We're going to talk about baking first. This is my favorite class ever. It's like called cooking for bakers or culinary for bakers or whatever. We're going to call it cooking for bakers. This is the class where as a baking student you go and you cook. It's great because they expect you to kind of fail so the chefs are really really nice and it's just a really chill class. It's really fun. Number two. We have cakes. It's like classical cakes or whatever. We're just gonna shorten it to cakes. You do a bunch of cakes. If you like cakes, it's fun. Number three, you have 
IPP. Oh my gosh, don't laugh, kids. I said PP. So for IPP, that is where you do, it stands for Individual Pastry Production. So you do all those little, like, entremets and little, like, patika toes and just, like, a bunch of little, the little cute fancy stuff that you can sell for a lot of money. So if you want to, like, be rich but make really boring stuff, that's what you're going to do. Um, then we have breads. Simple. You make bread. Um, I feel like I'm missing one. Shoot, am I missing one? I lied. It's four. Is it four? Okay, I'm definitely missing one. When I edit, I'm gonna add it if I am. I was right. I knew it. There is a fifth class. It's called like, um, like design techniques or something like that. I'm not sure if culinary kits have it, baking kits have it, because it's to like improve your like design of like cakes or whatever. So yeah, it's not even in a kitchen. It's in like an art room. It's really chill. You guys are gonna love it. Then when we talk about academics, we have nutrition, self-explanatory. You learn about nutrition. Then you have gastronomy. Okay, so am I the only one that didn't know what gastronomy was? I thought it was like you learn about like like, I don't know what gastronomy means. I'm honestly so stupid. But it's like history behind food. I didn't know that. It's a history class. And then there was uh, menus. So this is when you talk about like the business side, how to like uh, do profit. And yeah, I took this online. So I think this one you have a choice for either in class or online. Like, so if you're confused about all of these classes, basically how it works is you have like it separates. So every single one of these classes is only for three weeks. So within the semester like every three weeks you change the class Mondays are no longer off and also you have these and these on the same day so so it's like every day Monday through Friday is a kitchen class so it's one of the kitchen classes Monday, Wednesday and then Friday is your um, academics these are like you have like a three hour break or something between your kitchen and your academic class so usually monday wednesdays and fridays unless it's tuesdays and thursdays i don't know uh, those days are your longer days but otherwise it's not too bad this is what it looks like for a second semester okay so one of you guys commented uh what are the positives to going to cia so apparently i sent a really negative that video so thank you for thinking i sound like a negative nancy i'm kidding i'm, I'm really kidding i hope you're not offended if you know who you are, I'm like fully kidding. Love you guys. So, <laughs> sorry if I made it sound like going to CIA sucks. It's just there are a lot of rules, and that's when I was like, I was in a grumpy mood, guys. But so there are great things, you know. If you love cooking and this is what you want to pursue, obviously you can't go to any other college to do this. You can't go to a normal college, so that's great. A lot of people say like the strictness of it is not fun, but at the same time, it kind of preps you to be a better person instead of like fooling off I guess and just like going to parties and stuff like that you're growing up faster I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing oh the biggest thing ever the dorm rooms are fantastic I could go off about the dorm rooms okay but I don't think people appreciate them enough so when you're a freshman there's this one hall called Hudson Hall and we're talking about the New York campus okay this is the only hall where there are triples and communal bathrooms so if you go to a normal college communal bathrooms aren't like a shock Every other dorm room is a double and you have your own bathroom. Another thing is that CIA has townhouses and lodges. So what that means is, okay, honestly, I don't really know what a townhouse is. It's like, it's a really big room, I think. It's, you can look into it. It's on the website. But those are like so far away from campus and no one ever talks about it. I don't understand like how you would walk from there to there. I don't know. But lodges are really nice. I'm planning to live in one of those after I go on my extern. And it's basically like... A really nice hotel room where you have like a kit your own kitchen area and then you have separate bedrooms so that's really great food snobs you guys are gonna be like ooh, this is disgusting this is like a hit or miss I think the food so obviously when you go to a culinary school like your cafeteria and your dining halls everyone's like oh the food's gonna be so much better right and it is so the people that always complain there are so many people that complain that the food sucks and that like they just complain that it sucks i'm like dude if you went to a normal college your food would be even worse so like stop complaining just be grateful you have food to eat i can go off about that but i'm not going to because another good thing is that since it is a small campus you don't have to walk too far so i know like other places you have to walk like miles to get to class it's really close for here oh this is a positive for me there's like no one ever in the gyms so like the gyms are pretty empty which is Great. Okay, so uh, someone was wondering about what externship is. So externship is like an internship. Um, it's required. It's a required semester. It's like part of 
it's like its own semester so you basically go to wherever you want you can travel abroad or whatever and you just go on an internship for how long is it it's like two months maybe three months and you can go anywhere you want you can even try to find a place at home and live at home which is what i'm doing especially with like the virus and everything okay so i don't know what else i could possibly talk about i think i answered everyone's questions if you guys still have any more questions please leave a comment down below i probably won't make a third video about this but actually in like two weeks i have to go back to campus we will be like in quarantine style on campus i have to go finish up my classes so maybe i could try to do like a vlog of my room or something for you guys comment down below let me know and yeah